This is David Cairns for the United States Chess Federation. I have the privilege of speaking for a few minutes with Boris Gelfand, who does not need any introduction to the chess public. And the moments we have, Boris, maybe we can talk a bit about your training, your preparation, what made you who you are in the context of the USSR of your period. We have a stereotype in the West that training for many of the great uh, luminaries of Soviet culture was rigid, it was stern, it was heavily focused, and also the training was high quality. I myself worked in this field. I was training hockey players at Spartak Moscow. I noticed the quality of training sometimes was very, very poor. It was not living up to the stereotype. Your training was good. It seems to me your training depended, as did others in the Soviet, on the qualities of the personal trainer. You had very good trainers. I think you've said this in many other forms. In the moments we have, can you give us some idea about Albert Kappengut as a trainer, how he managed to develop you specifically? Yes, thank you, and my pleasure to be here. And uh, I want to say that I agree with you, that I grew up in Minsk, and in Minsk we had 50 trainers. And maybe dozens were very high quality, by, but others uh, uh, were hardly qualified. Uh, well, to a certain level, yeah? And I was uh, very lucky that uh, all my trainers, this my train in Minsk, uh, Edward Zelkin, Tamar Golove and uh, Albert Kappengut were very high quality and they developed uh, a passion for chess. They showed me the beauty of the game and especially with Albert I started training in 1980 and uh, I think uh, I was very lucky because uh, in a way he never showed me anything. He forced me to ask questions. He never agreed to meet me if I don't have a questions. So he developed uh, uh, an attitude that uh, he can assist you, but you should make all, all your effort uh, yourself. I spoke with Yuri Shulman about yes. Captain Good, and he said the first thing he said was, I had to come to him with questions. It yes. forced me to look for a lot. And yes. I found a lot. Yes. The second thing he said was, he imparted to me that it's not so important the truth in the position, objectively this must be the one good move, but the excitement in the position, he made me enjoy the work of studying chess. Was your experience similar? Uh, yes, but uh, it's true, but I would want to underline some different things. Is that uh, we trained with him in the 80s, and at that time, uh, it was different times, there were no computers, there were no database, and he clearly taught me a lot of lessons uh, for my attitude to uh, data because we could sort the data available at the time from uh, magazines, from bulletins, from chess informants, so ever, and we sorted them so incredibly well so they were ages ahead of time of any other rival and it formed my, learn, it taught me how to, to deal with information which is uh, uh, very accessible now but still it requires a lot of uh, mastery to deal with it well. Yeah, research is a skill that has to be yes. learned and he helped you learn research as a skill. Yes. He spoke with you mostly one-on-one? -on -one. Yes, we always work one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes later on uh, we had training sessions together with Ilya Smirin, but uh, most of the things we were one-on-one. -on -one. I came to his uh, apartment and we worked and then he gave me some uh, he had an incredible library mm -hmm. and uh, he gave me all these uh, books and uh, bulletins and uh, to study at home. So he very much encouraged uh, homework and uh, what I also want to say is that uh, I think he was a pupil of Isaac Boleslavsky and it's also had a big impact but he was a, pu a pupil of a great trainer and a great player himself. So I had uh, some generations of experience in training. Yeah? And I was very privileged. In this period in the West, it became a fashion to imitate the training advice of Alexander Kotov in Tiny Michelin Shakmatista. Yeah. Train, I think like a grandmaster. Yeah. And many grandmasters think it's not for them. Uh, Valery Baim said, think like a tree, the tree of analysis. I'm yeah. not a tree. Do you think like a tree? Did, did Albert or any other trainer ask you to experiment with this very pattern organized selection of a move by candidate moves, only think about each line once, or did you more like Kramnik? Kramnik said, my, my search for move is chaotic. He says, what yeah, about also, you? also my search for move is chaotic, and uh, also I don't remember the Albert uh, talked with me, 
but also he underlines that in each position you should try to think out of box, you should try to find the original idea, that you shouldn't go by stereotype or repeat the games which were played before, that the games which were played before are basis for your study. You should always look for and you would find the possibility to improve or find the other idea. My two final questions. One is uh, about Yuri Shulman's comment regarding Kappengut. Kappengut had a difficult uh, experience with the Soviet Union. He was found with a copy of Dr. Zhivago. He might have been yeah. an extra class grandmaster. His career was cut short, but he devoted himself to training. I asked Shulman, said, would he trust you enough to talk about politics? I don't mean just anti-Soviet, but he would talk about politics and life and training as a person. He spent a lot of time with you like that, or was it all chess? Yeah, also, uh, before we go to this question, I want to underline, to say one thing, that also the basic of our training was analyzing of my own game. We went deeply to each of the games, especially lost one. We, it was a must that you never repeat the same mistake twice. And now I get back to your questions. And uh, I would rather say that uh, we talk a lot about art, history, okay. literature, so independent thinking was very much developed. I'm very pre lucky that it was also in the family, it was my wife's father, and also with Albert we discussed freely about all about uh, uh, literature, if you like the book, or art, and uh, history, what was history then, yeah, okay, we had very limited access, obviously to knowledge, but of course it was open discussions. I, I wouldn't dare say discussions, because his knowledge uh, in uh, these fields are I don't Very know, deep. 10, 100, I don't know how many I times understand. bigger than mine, yeah? yeah. Uh, that's why, but uh, uh, the idea is that everything has to be uh, questioned and discussed rather than believed uh, also was developed. It's an important lesson. Yes. Uh, maybe we can finish with this. I asked Yuri uh, Shulman, uh, if you're nostalgic uh, for Minsk, what do you think about it? And he told me, he asked me about chess or about life. I said, well, you tell me, maybe about life. And he said, grandmother, summertime, visit Stuart Dacha. Do you have a memory you want to share with us, what you're nostalgic for? Well, I'm gonna, you, have many, you have many. I have many, I have many. And uh, basically, I had a lot uh, I was lucky when we started playing chess with a group of uh, juniors who studied and we have friendship all over our life and that's uh, also okay, no one uh, stays it's a in universal Minsk. universal happy memory, obviously. Yes, and uh, you know, when I played my match with Anand in uh, uh, Moscow World Championship match, uh, I don't know, Many dozens, friends, do yeah. dozens of people, almost everyone from all over the world came to Moscow to root for me. Album 61, if you haven't yes. seen it, Israeli documentary about Gelfand's experience in 2012 and before. I highly recommend. Uh, I uh, want to recommend your book as well. I'm going to study it hard. If I don't like it, I won't blame you. I'll blame myself. Sorry? I say, I'm going to work hard on your book. Yeah. And if it gives me a headache, I'll blame myself. I won't blame you. Thank you. That. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And it's on the first book. Some more coming. Some more coming. Some more uh, coming. Do, I, do, do you have a hint to our audience as to what those books will be? Will they, do, you, do you already know the plan? Would you want to? Is it is a secret? Well, I, it's not a secret. First, the uh, book deals with uh, positional decision making. We'll go also to dynamic, to end games, to openings, to all other fields. Okay. To all you. other fields. We don't have a clear uh, structure yet, but uh, with Jakob Ogard, we are already. Part of second book is done, and we are working very seriously to maintain the same quality or even go higher. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for for.